I'd like to welcome you to St. Adosius Church, Landogo. Um, it's uh, been a religious site here since the year 625, um, but in 700, the Bishop of Landaff retired here, uh, whose name was Adosius, and he gives his name to the church here. He set up a cell on the site, and we believe he actually died here. But following on from that, centuries later, a medieval church was built on the site. It was quite small, um, but by 18, the early 1800s, um, it was apparently in poor repair and uh, the church had to be rebuilt. Now, I think that's the official record because anecdotal information from the village will tell you that the villagers actually felt the church was far too small. Landogo was becoming far too important a place to have such a small church and it was the centre of the boat building industry on the Y. And it's here that the Landogo Trow was built in great numbers and of course is commemorated in the Bristol pub, the Landogo Trow, which featured in Robert Louis Stevenson's novel Treasure Island. Um, but back to the church, um, the records show that it is a Mm, what can I say? It's a Gothic revivalist and uh, the architect John Pollard Seddon, who was a leading exponent of this, um, actually designed and oversaw the work. Uh, we get lots of visitors. The uh, church is open all day, every day in normal circumstances. We get people come off the Y Valley Walk to come in and sit inside and have a look at it. And they're bowled over by the east window depicting the ascension. and also the wall paintings, which are really, really interesting. But a church isn't just its building, it's the worshipping community that are important. And in Landogo on Sundays, we have two services, one at nine o'clock, a more traditional type of service, and one at 10.45 in the village hall, which is more laid back, evangelical, um, attracts families and children, and those people that don't like to get up too early on a Sunday morning. Um, but th these are strange times, and we've had to adapt to strange times and not being able to worship in our church. But opportunities arise, and Zoom has been one of them. So every Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, the two congregations come together, and we have a very interactive service live um, on Zoom, and everyone is free to take part. And afterwards, of course, we have coffee and a chat when everyone comes together and all in the safety and the comfort of your own home. But today we're filming our service here in Landogo. We want to share it with you and we hope you will enjoy sharing the worship in our community in this very lovely setting. As a parish, we have been looking at Jesus, the good news of God to his world, Jesus, the Lamb of God, the Bread of Life, the Light of the World, themes from John's Gospel. And this is what we want to share with you. It has a particular relevance and resonance for the times we're experiencing at present, as we strive to cope with the devastating effects of the Covid virus, anxiety and fear, serious sickness and death, grief and isolation, economic pressures, and surging unemployment, and government debt greater than our economy. And this in addition to the ongoing problems caused by climate change and increased persecution of Christians throughout the world. It is all too easy to feel overwhelmed. But in the midst of all this, 
Jesus remains what Jesus always is. And he remains good news in the darkness of a needy world. Our theme today is that we are good news people. Jesus calls us to be the light of the world. The darker it gets, the more people of faith stand out and offer hope to those around us. And so we have come together as the family of God in our Father's presence to offer him praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive his word, to bring before him the needs of the world and to seek his grace, that through his Son, Jesus Christ, we may give ourselves to his service. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. And now we have our first hymn, Crown Him with Many Crowns. Let us remain in worship before him, who is our Lord and Saviour, our King, as we invite his Holy Spirit to show how and where we have fallen short of his glory. Let us confess our sins to the Father and seek his pardon and peace. Almighty, merciful God, we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with all our heart, and we have not loved others as Christ loves us. We are truly sorry. In your mercy, forgive us. Help us to amend our lives, that we may delight in your will, 
and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you and set you free from sin. Strengthen you in goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we have our first reading. The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 52, verses 7 to 10. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your watchmen lift up their voices. Together they shout for joy. When the Lord returns to Zion, they will see it with their own eyes. Burst into songs of joy together, you ruins of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord will lay bare his holy arm in the sight of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth will see the salvation of our God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now let us say together the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, for he has come to his people and set them free. The Lord has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us to show mercy to our forebears, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous before him all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And we have our second reading. The Gospel reading today is taken from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 5, verses 14 to 16. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us declare our faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Father, we pray that as we begin to uh, listen to your word in this sermon that we will hear from you. So Holy Spirit, open our ears and our hearts to what you're saying to us. For Jesus' sake. Amen. As Jane has mentioned, we've been working our way as a parish through the Gospel of John, looking at Jesus. Gospel means good news. And the good news is summed up in Jesus who he is, why he came, and what he makes possible for those to choose him as Saviour and Lord. In the midst of these times of darkness, of uncertainty, of fear, of reversal, of frustration, we see a different reality. That's what faith is about. We are people of faith because we are people of the good news. To use the words of Paul, you will shine among the people of this world like stars in the sky. To use the words of Jesus, you are the light of the world. You, me, us. As Isaiah put in our Old Testament reading, how beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. By faith, we see what others cannot. And so in the dismay around us, we can offer light to others in terms of at least two confidences. The first is, we belong to God. We are the ones who've heard the good news, who've believed and turned to Jesus. We've come out of rebellion and yielded ourselves to the one whose name is above every name and before whom every knee will bow to the glory of God the Father. By faith, we've been adopted into God's family. We belong. We are his today, tomorrow, and forever. There's no security like that, none greater. We do not fear today, and we do not fear death or eternity. The psalmist refers to God often as our rock. It's like a foundation under our feet. The New Testament talks about things that can be shaken and cannot be shaken, And the only one who cannot be shaken is God, to whom we belong. So we put our hope and our faith and our confidence in him. He's promised to be with us till the end of the age, and nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. All sorts of things can come against us. Our world can even fall apart. But God has our hearts and our lives, and we're safe. That's why we can shine, because the darkness cannot overcome the light. The second confidence is in that Isaiah reading. The the prophet says, your God reigns. Well, that's our God who reigns. He's the creator of the universe, the one who made it all, still rules over it, sustains everything by his powerful word. When Jesus began his ministry in the Gospels, his message was simple. The time has come. The kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news. Basically, when you read the Gospels, the picture is that Jesus has come to restore God's rule to this world. The marks of Satan's robbing, killing, destroying are everywhere, all over the place. 
But every miracle, every healing, every deliverance, every leper cleansed was a sign of the restoration of God's rule in people's lives and back on the earth. And in the cross, Jesus defeats the powers of darkness. If we have a biblical view of evil, we will understand that COVID-19 hasn't come from God. And God has equipped human beings made in his image to overcome even this virus. Developing a vaccine is kingdom work, restoring life that is being taken from us. You get to the end of the Bible, you know that God wins. That's the great story. Your God who reigns will reign forever and ever, and his throne will never pass away. And so we confess in the creed, Jesus will come again in glory to judge the world, and the king, his kingdom will have no end. We'll be part of the new heavens and the new earth. And even today as Christians, we share in the resurrection life of Jesus, the life of the coming age, the life of his kingdom already begun here on earth. Our God reigns. He's got it all in hand. So how can we shine more brightly? The key question is, how can we deepen our faith? Because it's the degree to which these truths are real in us that we will stand apart in these dark days. Our own personal walk with God is the starting point. In the early days of the church, shortly after Pentecost, when Peter and John were arrested, the scholars were amazed at the way in which they were addressed by these fishermen. There was a kind of presence about them. And those who wanted to deal with them made a deduction. Ah, it's because they've been with Jesus. And since we belong, since we are God's children, we become good news people because we've been with Jesus. And that's what people will work out. We, are, we allow ourselves week by week and day by day to be forgiven, to be restored, to be loved, to be held. Like Moses, we reflect the glory of the one in whose presence we've spent time. So by faith, we see what others miss. We read God's revelation of himself in the scriptures. We study them on our own. We study them in our groups. We join in worship. We're constantly reminding ourselves of God's goodness and greatness. And these things prevent us from getting, forgetting our God reigns. We're ultimately safe because he's got the whole world and the universe in his hands. So, in a world of fear and darkness, we shine like the light that we know. Paul puts it like this, we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair persecuted but not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed. This is true because by faith we see a far greater reality than those around us. We know that our God reigns. We know that we belong to him. And the good news we know and believe is not just for us but for all people. And we can help light their way home to God as we share our faith with them. We are the light of the world. The response when I say, Lord, hear us, the response is, Lord, graciously hear us. Let's pray. Jesus, you are the light of the world who has shone into the darkness of our hearts. We thank and praise you for all that you have done for us. 
for the new life you have poured into us, for the ways you are changing us, healing us, renewing us, and making us more like you. It is an honour to serve you, Lord, and as we bring our intercessions to you, we firstly pray for ourselves and ask that you would use us to be your light in the world that day by day our lives would reflect the difference that knowing you makes. That in these days of COVID and lockdown, of unemployment, sickness, loneliness, fear and anxiety, we might bring your gift of peace, of reassurance, of hope, of life by our attitudes and actions by the way we serve others, by the way we love our families, our neighbours, and those we come into contact with day by day. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the unity of the church in witness and proclamation of the gospel. Jesus, you said that the world will know that we are your disciples by the way we love one another. Today, we honour the other churches in our ministry area and in our diocese. In our cycle of prayer, we pray particularly for those in the Abergavenny ministry area, that you would bless them today as they seek to join together in worship by whatever means they have chosen, by pre-recorded services like this, by Zoom, or at a social distance in their church buildings. Be present to them, uplift and encourage them. We honour too the other denominations in our deanery, the Methodists, Baptists, Roman Catholics and Wysham Christian Fellowship. In our unity, may we be as a light shining in the darkness. We pray for Bishop Cherry, for our Archdeacon Ambrose, our ministry area leaders Tim and Karen, and for all our clergy and lay leaders. Fill them with the knowledge of your love and care for them today. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. us. We pray for the peace and stability of all peoples and for the leaders of the nations, particularly at this time of the COVID-19 epidemic. Give them wisdom to make the right decisions for all their people and grace in dealing with those who oppose them. We pray specifically for our First Minister, Mark Drayford, and for our Prime Minister, Boris Johnson and his cabinet, for the members of the Senate and members of Parliament. Show them how to look beyond their own personal interests to the good of the country as a whole. Give them space for reflection and clear thinking about all the issues surrounding COVID-19. Be their guide. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for places of work, education and leisure. We pray especially for the universities at this time, with the virus spreading among students and learning restricted to online teaching in so many of them, and for the hopes and fears of young people in all walks of life who see no hope for their futures. Lord, you are the God of hope. You alone cannot be shaken. Be their security. We pray for the children and teachers in our schools. We pray that in the midst of the measures taken to protect them, as they gather each day, there would be peace, joy and a zest for life that overcomes doubt and fear. Give teachers a special wisdom and the right words to reassure our children at this time. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. us. We pray for a blessing on our homes, for our relations and friends and all whom we love, and especially for those with whom we are not able to meet face to face and may not have seen for many weeks or months due to the current circumstances. 
take a moment to lift specific people to the Lord. Keep them safe, Lord. We trust them to your hands. We pray for those known to us who are having relationship difficulties that have been made worse during these past months of isolation. For those who have been furloughed or retrenched, or who were already unemployed. Lord, be their provider. For those whose mental health has really suffered through the months of shielding and isolation, Lord, be their comfort and strength. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, graciously graciously hear hear us. And finally, we lift to those to you who are sick and suffering and all who minister to their needs. Take another moment to lift specific people to the Lord. And in this parish, we specifically pray for Eden, age 14, who faces major surgery for cancer tomorrow. Lord, be with her, be her strength, and that of her parents and grandparents. Guide the surgeon's hands and bring healing to her. Let us commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God as we pray together in confidence the words Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The collect for today, the 27th Sunday of the year. Eternal Father, you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, that in him we may have eternal life. Reveal to us the greatness of your gift and inspire us to give ourselves to you in thankful service for his sake, who with you and the Holy Spirit is alive and reigns, one God, now and forever. Amen. And the Collect for Peace. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life. To serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your protection, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the Collect for Grace. O Lord and Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, we thank you for bringing us safely to the beginning of this new day. Defend us by your mighty power, that we may be kept free from all sin and safe from every danger and enable us in everything to do only what is right in your eyes. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we have our last hymn, Shine, Jesus, Shine.
to God the Father who first loved us and made us accepted in the Beloved, to God the Son who loved us and washed us from our sins by his blood, to God the Holy Spirit who sheds the love of God abroad in our hearts, to the one true God, be all love and all glory for time and for eternity. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.